today we're looking at sequences. So there are quite a few different types of sequences that you can encounter in 11 plus exams and at Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3. Here are some of the most reoccurrent ones. So our first type of sequence is arithmetic. We've got geometric, triangular numbers, square number sequences, sequences that contain two patterns, and Fibonacci sequences. So let's start with arithmetic. Arithmetic is the most, probably most common type of sequence. So an arithmetic sequence has something known as a constant difference. Basically, for every term, so this is term one, this is term two, this is term three, this is term four, and this is term five. Each time, it's going up in a constant difference, or it's going down in a constant difference. So from one to three, we can see it's going up two. From three to five, it's going up two. From five to seven, it's going up two. And from seven to nine, it's going up two. Now let's look at a descending arithmetic sequence. So from nine to seven, it's going down two. From seven to five, it's going down two. From five to three, it's going down two. And from three to one, it's going down two. You might encounter a sequence with a pattern. So sequences don't just, they aren't just number sequences. There's also patterns that have similar, um, that are also arithmetic. So you can see here, we've got um, these rectangles and hearts. As you can see here, if we were to add up all of the elements in the shape, so the hearts and the rectangles, so if we were to count that, those two hearts and these two rectangles, then we'd get four, okay? If we look at the next shape or the next figure, you can see we've got two hearts and then we've got four rectangles. So we've got, we've got six shapes. And then our next one here, we'll have eight shapes altogether. This shows you that sometimes if you get a pattern, you can understand it in terms of it being a sequence. Um, because it's adding two each time, so there's a constant difference. So this is an arithmetic sequence. You might get asked, especially uh, in Key Stage 3 and in some parts of Key Stage 2, some independent school papers, they might ask you for the rule of a uh, sequence. Okay, so we're just going to look at how to find the nth term for an arithmetic sequence. Um, if you read here, it says you can find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence by using the following formula. So when Tn equals Dn plus bracket A take away D, close bracket, um, with Tn representing any term in the sequence, which we also call the nth term, N representing the term number, D representing the common difference and A representing the first term. Um, let's just have a look at a sequence and then label each part of it. So you can see here, if we had a sequence that went 5, 8, 11, 14 and 17, then our common difference or D would be what would it be? That would be three, wouldn't it? So D would be three, and D should always be the same number. Now, A is the first term of a sequence. Here, our first term is five. So A would equal five. So A is equal to five. Now, our term numbers are given at the top, so that's our first term, that's our second term, our third term, fourth term, and fifth term. And our nth terms are shown along here, so Tn. It's got a little subscript N. 
it's 5, 8, 11, 14 and 17. Now if we can establish the value of d, which is our common difference, and a, our first term, then we can find the nth term of any arithmetic sequence very, very easily. So let's just do that right now. So let's look at our formula again. So we've got dn plus a take away d. I'm just going to write that down here. dn plus a take away d. Now we're going to replace these values. So I'm just going to write that in green so it stands out a bit. So we're going to replace d, this a, and this d over here. And what we'll get is d is equal to 3, so we'll get 3n plus, and then we're going to substitute in the 5, because that's the first term of the sequence. So 5 take away d, which is 3. So we'll get 3n plus, in brackets, 5 take away 3. Now, we can evaluate what's in the brackets, and we'll get 3n plus 2. Okay, so that's how you find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Let's go on to our next type of sequence, which is geometric. With the geometric sequence, as we can see with this one, each time we go from term to term, rather than adding a constant difference, we're multiplying by something. So 2 to 4, we're multiplying by 2. Um, 4 to 8, we're multiplying by 2. 8 to 16, we're multiplying by 2. 16 to 32, we're multiplying by 2. Okay, and then let's look at this one because it can also go down. So if our first term is 8 and our second term is 4, then what's happening is dividing by 2. And then 4 to 2 is dividing by 2. 2 to 1 is dividing by 2. And then 1 to a half is dividing by 2. Let's look at an example in nature. So when cells divide, it's a process called mitosis, but you don't need to know that yet. What happens is one cell will divide into two cells, and then two cells will divide into four cells. That's an example of how a geometric sequence can appear in nature. So we'd have one cell in our first generation, second gen we'd have two, and then third gen we'd have four, okay, and so on. Our th third type of sequence is triangular numbers. They're best shown using uh, this visual here. So this is an example of a triangular number sequence. So it's 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15. Let's look at the pattern from term to term. From 1 to 3, we're adding 2. From 3 to 6, we're adding 3. From 6 to 10, we're adding 4. And then from 10 to 15, we're adding 5. As you can see here, like I've, I've sort of done it more visually over here, um, you can kind of imagine it like a pyramid. So our first term will be 1. Our second term will be 3, because there's three dots. Our third term will be 6. Our fourth term will be 10. And then our fifth term will be 15. What do you think the next term is? It's 21, isn't it? Because then there'll be six dots down here. We'd be adding 6 to get to 21. So sometimes in an exam they might ask, what's the seventh triangular number. So that's what that means. Okay, square number sequences. Um, obviously you can get cube numbers and, and you can get roots and that kind of thing, but don't worry about that. Um, generally you only get square numbers. So a square number is basically when you multiply a number by itself, you get a square. So one times one is one squared, which is one. Two times two is 2 squared, and you can see we've got a little little index here. That's called an index, and this is an index. And it's next to a base, so the base is what we're, what we're multiplying by itself. Okay, so let me continue this, so you get 4, and then 3 times 3 is equal to 
3 squared, which is 9. Uh, why does it get its name? Um, if you think about a grid, so if you had a 1 by 1 grid, it would look like that. There'd be one cube, okay? One, one square, I mean. If you had a 2 by 2 grid, like uh, this, then there'd be four squares. If you had a 3 by 3 grid, then there'd be nine squares and so on. What do you think the next term is um, in this sequence? So you've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. What do you think the next one would be? Anyone know? So it would be 36. Okay, so that, that's another type of sequence that can appear in an exam. There's sometimes sequences where there's two different patterns going on. One with the odd numbered terms and one with the even numbered terms. Let's have a look at this one. So you've got 3, 7, 6, 14, 9, 21. If we look at our odd numbered terms, so our term 1, 3 and 5, you should notice from 3 to 6 we're going up in 3s and then from 6 to 9 we're going up in 3s. But then if you look at the even numbered terms from 7 to 14 and 14 to 21, we're going up in sevens. What do you think will be the next term in this sequence then? Well, if you think about it, if we're adding 3 to 9, then we should get 12. Okay, let's look at another one. 3, 5, 6, 5, 9, 5, 12, 5. In this type of sequence, again, it's quite similar. So if we let's label our odd number terms. You can see we're again going up in threes. So we're adding three, we're adding three, and we're adding three. Now, what's happening to our even terms? You should notice that it's repeating. So sequences can repeat. Our next term over here will be 5. And then if we go from 12 to our ninth term in the sequence, we're going to add 3 to it, so we get 15. OK. Final type of sequence that I'm going to talk about today is Fibonacci. A Fibonacci sequence is basically when a term in the sequence is generated from the previous two terms. If you look here, it might look a bit confusing to you if you haven't seen one before, but um, let's look at example one. So we've got one, one, two, three, five, and eight. Okay. Now this term here, so this third term, is the sum of our first term and our second term. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Then let's look at our, our fourth term. So our fourth term is 3. Now our second term and third term have added to give 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3. If we look at our fifth term, our fifth term is 5. Now our third and fourth terms have added to produce 5. So 2 plus 3 is 5. And then our sixth term is 8 because the sum of our previous two terms, 3 and 5, is equal to 8. So what do you think will come next? What do you think will come next? Your previous two terms are 5 and 8. The sum of 5 and 8 are 13. So 13 will be our next term in the sequence. Okay, let's look at another example. So we've got 5 and 6, 11, 17, and 28. So I want you to try and find the next term in the sequence. Try and find the next term in the sequence. So if you look at the previous two terms, 17 and 28, what's, what's, what do you get when you add them together? You should get 45. Those are all the sequences that, um, they may, I, I don't think there's that many more, if there are, 
Um, you might get some odd things that appear, but those are the sort of ones that come up the most in 11 plus exams and key stage two and some of key stage three. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and please feel free to leave any comments below.